Secretary of State Antony Blinken is postponing his trip to Beijing to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping this weekend. It comes as Chinese officials say the balloon moving over the U.S. is a civilian weather balloon. Now, it was first spotted over Billings, Montana. U.S. officials believe the balloon originated somewhere over Alaska's Aleutian Islands and flew into Montana via Canada. It has since moved into the middle of the country. The Pentagon says the balloon does not pose a threat to people on the ground. Beijing has since offered regrets and insists the balloon has limited steering capability and is in the hands of the jet stream. Well, for more, let's bring in Jacob Stokes. He is a senior fellow of the Indo-Pacific Security Program at the Center for a New American Security. We also have CBS News correspondent Christina Ruffini, who has been following this story. Thanks for both of you, or to both of you, for joining us. Christina, let's start with you and the big question of, of why the State Department says that they canceled the trip. Isn't this something they would want to talk about? I mean, you would think they have a lot to talk about and they could just add this to the list. Um, but a senior official a little while ago spoke to reporters and said, we've noted the PRC statement of regret, which is what you just mentioned. But the presence of this balloon in our airspace is a clear violation of our sovereignty as well as international law. And it's unacceptable that this has occurred. They said under this environment, they just didn't feel like they would be able to get enough done to really dive into these other really important topics that were on the agenda, including North Korea, Taiwan, Myanmar slash Burma. They were all these international issues they want to get into, as well as bilateral relations between the two, which have been it's a little to say strained, um, but State Department officials say given this, it would have been the elephant or balloon in the room, and they just thought they're going to wait. They said it's not canceled, it's postponed. They still want to meet, but they want to do it at a time where the climate is more amenable to fruitful conversations. Well, Jacob, let me turn to you. Tensions between the U.S. and China heightened this week. The U.S. is ramping up its military presence in the Philippines. There are reports that the Biden administration is considering cutting off Huawei from U.S. suppliers. And now this balloon. Why would the White House pause Secretary Blinken's trip to Beijing now? And what's your assessment of, of that move? Well, my assessment of that move is that ultimately it was the right choice it's really critical for trips like this to have a conducive environment. And I think it's clear, given the amount of media and political attention this is receiving, that that would have really overwhelmed many of the other uh, issues in the trip. The question, as Christina said, is, um, is this going to be just po postponed or canceled um, over a longer term? Because what's really important about the broader process of U.S.-China diplomacy that Secretary Blinken was going to Beijing uh, to advance is how to keep relations between the world's two superpowers from veering into conflict. That these issues where there are high tensions across a number of areas are going to be chronic and endemic. And so it's really about how do you manage tensions rather than fully improve relations. And so that's why the trip probably needs to happen eventually. Jacob, last month, the Coast Guard announced it was tracking a Russian spy ship off the coast of Hawaii. And now we're learning the Pentagon is tracking a suspected Chinese surveillance balloon. So, you know, how common is this to see this kind of thing? And what, what kind of national security threat do they both present? Well, uh, countries spy on each other, uh, especially big, powerful countries like the U.S., China, and Russia. That's just a fact of international relations, and it's been true um, really since the beginning of countries themselves. Um, the question is really the means, the, the way they do it. Um, it's, uh, the Pentagon has said that balloons like this, uh, spy balloons, they've seen uh, occasionally. Um, but it's not clear whether and how this balloon is able to get intelligence that can't be gotten by other sources, especially overhead spy satellites um, that both the Chinese and the Russians have. And so I think that's some of the information the U.S. government will probably be trying to assess right now is what kind of new and different information can a balloon like this uh, ascertain. Uh, Christina, I'm wondering um, if we have any sense of what China's objective was with this balloon. I know there's not a lot of information coming out, but what has Beijing said and um, what has the United States said in response? 
Well, as you mentioned, the Chinese have said, you know, we're sorry, this was a weather balloon. It's it's scientific research. It blew off course. It has limited maneuverability. And the, you know, the jet stream is just kind of taking it along its way. The U.S. has obviously said, we're not buying that. And they've canceled this meeting as a repercussion. The interesting thing here, of course, is the timing, right? Was this a strategic test balloon, if you will, to see how the U.S. would react? You know, is China putting this up to gauge you know, how long it took uh, the, the Pentagon to react, whether the Pentagon decides to leave it or shoot it down, whether they're studying the reaction more than they're studying the actual intelligence collected from the balloon, or if it was something that they thought they could keep secret longer and it just, you know, ended up in a place where people could see it with their naked eyes and then obviously it had to be addressed. But as we've been talking about, this is a very complicated relationship. Everyone is spying on each other always. Uh, it's only a matter of when that spying gets caught or gets called out. That's when it crosses over into my world, which is the diplomatic incidents. And there's a long tail on these things. And we're going to have to see, first of all, what the U.S. determines the objection, the uh, objective of this device was, what its capabilities were, how this comes to an end, whether it ends up having to be shot down or pushed out into the Gulf Stream or, you know, maybe a giant hair dryer just pushes it away. We don't know yet. Um, and how the U.S. and Chinese officials react to that, uh, the ultimate, ultimately what happens to this balloon is going to have a consequence on this already strained relationship uh, that both countries have to navigate because they both exist in the same geopolitical world, uh, but they do it uh, sometimes well and sometimes less well. And today's been been a tough sticking point in that relationship. You know, I, I have to talk about uh, th this expression of regret. I mean, is that, how uh, rare, should we say, is it, number one, Jacob? And two, you know, what does it say about how China's feeling about this? Well, I uh, read more Chinese foreign ministry statements than I'd like to admit, and I can tell you that most of the rhetoric uh, tends to be pretty tough, pretty belligerent. Uh, and so I noted uh, that the speed at which they, they offered this statement, but also the use of that word regret, as you said, is quite notable. And to me, uh, that suggests that Beijing wanted the visit uh, to move forward and that they wanted this, this process to happen. And in their system, as well as in our system, but especially in China, uh, directions from the top leader, Xi Jinping, really shaped the decisions in the system. And so when Xi Jinping and Joe Biden met last fall uh, in Bali and Indonesia and, and called for this diplomatic process, that was really a signal to the rest of the system to, to move it forward. I think the broader question um, that you know all of the U.S. national security and foreign policy apparatus are trying to understand is to what extent is China's uh, softer tone really just a tonal shift in uh, speaking more in, in a nicer way, uh, uh, or does it represent a willingness to, to do something substantively to improve the relationship? I think uh, the jury's very much out uh, on that, that second question, and, and we remain highly skeptical. And this in balloon incident only adds to that, that deep skepticism in Washington about China's intentions. A complex geopolitical situation. Jacob Stokes and Christina Ruffini, thanks to you both.